Hello everyone, and in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can start debugging your Swift data applications. Now, if we are interested in debugging Swift data, then Swift data is based on core data, then we have to go back and find out how we were debugging our core data applications. So let's go to Google and search for core data debugging. The first link, come over here, use your loaf.com debugging core data. Okay, that sounds interesting. Let's go ahead and click on that. And you can see over here that there are some launch arguments that you can put in your scheme that will allow you to see what's going on behind the scenes. So let's go ahead and try it out. We're just gonna try out the first one this one, and we'll go back to our application. It doesn't really matter what kind of application we are writing. Uh, we can do it for any application that uses core data or Swift data. I'm gonna go edit the scheme. And right over here in the arguments passed on launch, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new argument, and I'm just gonna copy paste it, and that's it. Now, the good thing about this argument is when I launch my application, you will see that on the output window, it's going to show me exactly what's going on. What queries got executed? Where is the file located? So this is the file. This is a path to the file since it's running in the simulator. That's why the path is indicating that it's in the simulator. And the most important part is the query that is getting executed. Select something, primary key, OPT, and C limit, Z name from budget, order by primary key. So we can definitely see that what is going on behind the scene, what SQL queries are getting executed. If you look on the front end, you can see that it just displays all the different budgets that I have, entertainment, $100, and groceries, $200. But there's more you can do. You can also see what's in the database. Now, one of the ways that you can use the built-in tools is by simply selecting all this path that you have. And there are multiple ways of selecting the path, I guess, but I usually select till the application support. And then I try to open up the terminal. And this is using the built-in tools, all right? So now, there are some other tools, uh, like maybe the core data editor and browser and all that stuff that you can use. But if you don't want to download anything, you can still use the SQLite 3 that is already installed on your machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the directory. Now you can see that I'm in the directory called application support. I can go and do ls and I can see the store. This is the store that we're talking about. This is where the database is, or this is the database. This is where all the stuff is stored. And now I can use SQLite 3. That's the command. And SQLite 3 is already installed on your Mac, so you don't have to download anything. And then we can say default.store because that's just the name of the store, the file. Now we're connected to that particular database using SQLite 3. Now at this point, we just have to learn a couple of different commands like schema, and it's going to print out all the schema for all the different tables. Now, the table that we are interested in is called Z budget. And all of these things start with a Z because, you know, Swift data is using core data and core data names their columns with Z. So everything begins with Z, Z, Z. But that's the only uh, actual table that we want all the other tables that you see, I mean, there are a lot of other tables over here. Uh, they are just created by core data for some other reasons, for internal behavior. So we don't really have to mess around with those things. Now, once we know the name of the table, which is Z budget, we can perform a select query, select everything from Z budget, just to see that what's in there. The upper casing or lower casing is not important, but I'm just writing it as it is, and a semicolon. And there we go. We were able to print out what's in the database. So I can now 
visualize using my terminal without installing any tools that what is inside my database. So this can really be helpful if you are creating application and you just want to know that, oh, what my database kind of looks like, you know. But there are some other tools that are available also. So let's say if I say core data visualize, then you will be able to see core data labs. Now these are paid tools. These are great tools, but they are paid tools. So you can definitely look at it. It looks beautiful over here. I mean, that's uh, amazing, right? But these are paid tools and you can definitely support indie developers also. I think there are other tools also, let's say core data, a browser. These might be some free tools also available. So search for those things, core data editor, core data browser, all of those things, I mean, they will be helpful for you, like whichever tool that you want. But I would always say, start with the basics. Start with the tool that is already installed on your machine. And this is the SQL Lite. So we're not really using anything. I mean, it's just SQL Lite tool. It gives you this kind of an interface where you can check out all the different things. You can interact, you can execute queries, you can do everything that you want to do with your database. So now I can go ahead and exit. Oops, it's just exit, not exit with uh, this thing. So you just have to learn some of these commands, but that's pretty much it. So now you'll be able to know that what exactly is going on in your database, um, how the database structure looks like, what kind of a data is stored, and what queries are getting executed, because that can be very important. If, if a query is doing some weird stuff uh, you, and you're printing it out over there, using the arguments that we supply to the environment, uh, then you can definitely see what's going on and you can stop that, all right? So there you have it. Hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, one more thing I want to add over here is I have recently launched Azam Sharp School. So all of my courses are now available on Azam Sharp School. You can definitely check out its courses. You can see a whole list of courses over here, courses on MV Design Patterns, Swift Data Bootcamp, uh, and there are a lot of courses. So definitely check out these courses. And apart from these courses, I also provide monthly or annual membership, which will give you access to 21 courses, 120 hours of video, three digital books, all the current courses, and all the future courses. So usually people go with membership because you know they, they want to get access to the current courses, basically all of this plus the future. So hope you will enjoy you will enjoy it. Just go to adamsharp.school and start learning. Thank you so much.